Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, what a joy it is to be with you again this morning. I woke up with my mind on Jesus. I pray that you did as well. Now, on that note, let's just be honest. Not every day or even the moment that we climb out of bed, we feel joy in our hearts. We feel like a hallelujah is springing from our lips. We must prime ourselves sometimes, oftentimes, in the things of God. And music is a great way to do that. So let me encourage you. In this ministry, I've taken the opportunity to download music videos that uplift the heart, that glorify Jesus. And if you'll just go to the playlist, click on that video, they will play in succession one after the other. And I promise you, friends, if you wake up in a bad mood, if you wake up just feeling the blahs, after a few minutes of listening to these songs, your heart will be exalted to a place that you might not have ever experienced before. And so I would encourage you to do this and just close your eyes, listen to the words, maybe even read the lyrics on the video screen itself and allow yourself to worship, truly worship the Most High. I promise you it'll change your days. Well, on that note, today is October the 17th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now we're continuing our look into the life of Job through the book of Job. And today we're in chapter 13. Now, as I told you, Job is replying to his three friends, specifically to the last one who spoke, Zophar. And in chapters 12, 13, and 14, he is replying to the statements that they have made. And we pick up in chapter 13 and Job says, Lo, mine eye has seen all of this. My ear has heard and understood it. I know what you guys are telling me. What ye know, the same I know. I'm not inferior unto you. And the reason Job says this is because all they're telling him is scriptural, biblical cliches. And that's not what Job needs. Job needs a friend. If you've ever been through a painstaking, disastrous situation in your life, the last thing you want someone to come and tell you is, well, it's all going to work out in the end. All things work together for good to those who love God. Although that's true, that's not what you need in that moment. You know, Paul said, when I speak to a Jew, I speak as a Jew. Well, why don't we speak to hurting men as hurting men? Why don't we meet them in their time of need instead of coming along with all these church cliches and proper sayings? And that's what Job is saying here. He's saying, look, since I can't get the answer from you in verse three, I'll speak to the almighty. I'll reason with God. You guys are just forgers of lies. You are physicians of no value. You're not doing anything for me by the words you're telling me because I know everything that you're telling me. I don't necessarily need to hear truth because I know the truth. So instead of preach to me, why can't you cry with me? He continues in verse five and says, oh, that you would all together hold your peace. That should be your wisdom. In other words, Job says you would be wiser if you would keep your mouth shut. Isn't that what Solomon tells us in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28? Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. He that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. And so that's what Job is saying. He's saying, look, if all you're going to do is come at me with these cliches and wise sayings, I would rather you just remain silent. I'll take my case before the Lord. In verse six, he says, hear my reasoning. Hearken to the pleadings of my lips. He says, why do you speak wickedly for God and talk deceitfully for him? In other words, why are you trying to defend God? God can defend himself. Will you accept his person? Will you contend for God? Is it good that he should search you out? Or as one man mocketh another, do you so mock him? So Job is saying, look, let the Lord speak for himself. You don't need to be his spokesman. It would be one thing if you spoke on his behalf and you spoke the truth that he would speak. But you guys are forgers of lies. Isn't that what he told us in verse four? He says, for doing this in verse 10, he will surely reprove you. And he does. 
Verse 11, shall not his excellency make you afraid and his dread fall upon you? How many are those who are speaking lies among the people of God and they do it with no fear whatsoever? I had a conversation with someone on um, the internet the other day and basically what they were propagating was that Jesus is the Holy Spirit. And so I asked them one simple question. I said, well, if Jesus is the Holy Spirit, then why did Jesus have to go back to heaven to be with the Father before he could send the Spirit back to us? And his reply was simply, you don't know what you're talking about. He could not engage in educated argument because he had no answer. All he was doing was propagating lies. And so the next thing that I told him was, look, the blood of the people that you're teaching, that's going to be on your hands, man. Are you ready to stand under such a responsibility, such a heavy weight, such a heavy burden? Don't you fear God to be teaching these types of things? I mean, if you take your teaching from the Bible and you can prove it through the Bible, but if one simple argument pokes holes in your theory, in your doctrine, then you should quit teaching what you're teaching. And that's why Paul said, look, people don't need to be teaching who are novices because they don't have a full grasp on the word of God. And that's what Job is telling his friends here in verse 11. Shall not his excellency make you afraid? Shall not his dread fall upon you? Hold your peace in verse 13. Leave me alone that I may speak and let come on me what will. He basically says in verse 14, I'll take my life in my own hands. I'll take my chances with God because I'm getting nowhere with you guys. Though the Lord slay me, I will trust in him. I will maintain my own ways before him. He will be my salvation. He says in the next few verses, O Lord, I only have two requests of you. Withdraw your hand far from me, for what is upon me is too great to bear. Speak to me and I will answer, or let me speak and you answer me. And second, show me my iniquities, my sins. Make known to me my transgression and my shortcomings. You see, friends, that is the true heart of a follower of the Lord Jesus. Show me my transgressions, that I may bring them before you and they may be forgiven. In John chapter 3 and verse 20, well, actually, let's pick up in verse 19. Jesus says, light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He doesn't want to acknowledge his sin. He doesn't want to see his transgressions or his shortcomings. But in verse 21, look at what it says. He that doeth truth cometh to the light. Why? So that his deeds may be made manifest. And that's what Job is saying here. Oh God, if there is sin in my life, even from my youth, show it unto me so that I may deal with it properly, plead your forgiveness, and you may forgive me. He says in verse 24, why do you hide your face from me and hold me as your enemy? Now, you know, when we read these questions, it would seem like, well, Job, who are you to question God like that? But we got to remember, this is a man in deep pain. And if you've been there, you've done the same. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily proper to do so, but this man is speaking out of the anguish of his soul. And God, as a loving father, feels the pain in Job. And even as much as he is thrilled over the fact that Job has remained faithful in this situation, he is heartbroken by what is taking place to Job, upon Job. Satan has unleashed his fury upon Job. And if it were not for the staying hand of God, Satan would kill Job. So even though Job feels judgment, what he understands to be the wrath of God in this situation... Mercy is being extended, and so does he work in our lives, friends. When we think that we can bear no more, he extends strength. He offers grace. He increases our faith. He deepens our love for him, and he reveals to us our need for him. Oh, dear friends, 
If we could only understand the breadth and the depth and the height and the width of his love for us, what a great and loving God he is to us, his people, always meeting us in our need and just a whisper away if we will simply whisper his precious name, Jesus. No other name, friend, like that name, Jesus. Devils flee, hell trembles, troubles disappear at the very name of Jesus. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of trouble and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take his name where'er you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. That name of Jesus, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I pray that you will walk in that joy today, that you'll know the joy of the Lord whom you serve, and he will guide your every step. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.